The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. It's Q101. It is Monday. You guys check in. 312-591-8300. Give us that proof of life from the long weekend. Hopefully you guys got the chill. Get your drink on. Do whatever you do. Get your smoke on. Whatever you do to enjoy and relax. There was so much going on this weekend. Uh, let us know what you did was good. Did you win the weekend? Did you lose the weekend? Just check in with us. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Ahoy, Kenzie. Hi. <laughs> and also we'll have Lollapalooza VIP tickets all week long. So 720 coming up in Clash with Kenzie. Lollapalooza tickets for Thursday with Billie Eilish. That's that night. And then, of course, Portrait of the Man. I haven't seen Billie in so long. That's that's really my ideal night, to be it, honest. It's weird starting on Thursday. Kind of, you got to suck it up and let's go. Let's do it. Uh, that's for, great, though, because then you can just... When it gets real rowdy is, like, your Saturday show. And you yes. can just... You can just be fast asleep because you already saw Billy on Thursday. You're just gonna find a nice little part under a tree and put a little blanket out there, a little mm-hmm. banky. And just, just relax. Take, after take, that. A, take a little nap. Uh, so we'll have these tickets for different days all week long, VIP style. You'll be taken care of from Brian and Kenzie. And uh, looking back on the weekend a little bit, we had the Renaissance Fair on Saturday. Oh, it was the best time. It really, really was. Um, going around meeting the listeners that were out there. Um, just the entire festivities of it. I got dragged into a whip show. Yes. I forgot that guy's name. Um, Adam Crack, I believe. <laughs> was it Adam Crack? Thank that you. Okay, the, yeah, Adam Crack. Yeah. He was unbelievable. And I didn't intend, you know, we were, it's one of the cooler things you see there in the middle. You kind of walk in, there's a little kind of a grassy knoll. And he's out there taking these like bull whips, like whipping them around. I get dragged into the show. You can see the pictures and video at Q101.com on our Facebook page. You always say stuff like that, like I got dragged in, but you love attention. I you were lo- I, so excited to be part of the show. I was so stoked to get you up there. Want it, you're like, oh God. But then you like run in into it. <laughs> Do you really want me? Uh, <laughs> you get so excited. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that whip got so close to your ass though. <laughs> it did. I was like, oh God. It was terrifying, actually. Part of me was like, hit him because we wanted to go in on oh, Monday. I knew you were looking forward to some kind of injury. Absolutely. <laughs> How funny that would have been I, if you couldn't attend the rest of the day. Kenzie's out there heckling the you guy. Got whipped in the ass. Yeah. On <laughs> accident. Kenzie's going, yeah, miss it, miss it, ah, ah, ah. Trying to scare the guy to. Re- I, I was like booing him because he wasn't hitting you. Yeah, it was it was it's wonderful. Not part of the trick. Uh, that the jousting and uh, everything else. The, the the jousting was so cool because a lot of people think that kind of stuff is staged, but the jousting is not staged. It has a different turnout absolutely every single time, and it's actually a family that travels. It was a dad, his twin sons, his daughters, the host. Could you imagine being a family of jousters? That's what they do full time. I got to believe it's the only way you become a jouster in America these days. Maybe back in the day, you were an accountant. Well, obviously, and, and, it was more po- back you know, in the day, it was like being in the NFL. Yeah, you were an accountant and a jouster. Maybe you had a couple different jobs, you know, but being a full-time jouster in America in 2023 They called is- it the, the NJO. It was big. Very <laughs> They're incredible. Yeah. They're unbelievable. That they- it's so good. Yeah, it was, it was a wonderful time. So thanks, everybody, that came out and saw them. And, of course, uh, won the tickets from us. And you keep going. It goes all the way through Labor Day on the weekends. You can go to Q101.com again for all the information on the tickets. I got some of the best food. Yeah, did you get the little turkey leg later on? I missed you after that. I did not get a turkey leg because I I have had it before. So Mm. I'd I'd already experienced that. But I had some uh, different things than normal. First off, there's a stand that has iced chai tea lattes, which doesn't... It was so hot out. Mm. And it was so icy cold and delicious. But you hate cold, usually. Well, the drink was... I I like icy cold drinks. Yeah. I don't like warm beverages. (laughs) As she pulls her blanket around her right now in the studio. It's (laughs) ridiculous. Why do you keep it this cold in the earth? I don't control the temperature in here. You're so full of crap. I've asked you to email the engineer like 16 times. And you ignore Mm. me. I have a heated seat. I have a blanket. Anyways, so I get this icy cold (laughs) chai tea. It was the best chai tea I've ever had in my life. Even if you don't like chai teas, you're going to like this one. And I got one of the big pickles. Do so they have dill, garlic, or spicy? I want spicy. Best pickle 
of my life. And see, I said this when she was eating the pickle, that you tend to speak in extremes. This is the best. This is the best ever. This is the best ever. Oh, well, how do I speak in extremes? You Give decides, me one example. You just gave two. You said it was the best ever chai tea and the best yeah. ever pickle. Well, I meant it. I wanted to make sure, so I, I verified. chai tea with me right now, and the yeah. one on Saturday was better. Yeah, that's so, that. So... Suck it. <laughs> I, want to, I, just want to, I want to verify. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. Q101, Brian and Kenzie. And yes, coming up in a fact that makes your brain go. Well, as Kenzie made it very clear, she's very cold in her studio. She has the, the heated seat and the blanket. Yes. Yeah, all wrapped up there. We, we get, it keeps, it's frosty in here, in the high-rise building here in the studios of Q101. It's a little frosty. Because that's how you prefer it, and you get everything you want. It's not true at all. True. It's, it was, it's been cold decades before I got here, and it'll be cold decades after I leave. Not if I have anything to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> you can also send an email to the engineer and say, I'd like it a little warmer in here. I have tried. You know that. You've sent, did you send a very stern email, all caps? No, because no one cares what <laughs> well, I think, Brian. I asked you to do that's it. That's not true. That's not true. Everybody cares what you, you think. You go behind my back, and you're always like, well, I think it feels great. Like, you say stuff like that, and then no one feels motivated to help. If uh, I went behind your back, how'd you know I said that? Because, like, I find out. <laughs> you ask people what Brian says behind your back. People tell me yeah. that you're a big gossip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, either way, listen. If you're hot out there, because it's been kind of, uh, well, it's been mostly pleasant, but there's been some really, really hot days, and there's a way, in fact, something you're doing that's absolutely wrong to stay cooler in your house, and we'll let you know that coming up in the fact that makes your brain go boom. Maybe it isn't the best fact, but it will save you some money, I guarantee that, and you'll be cooler in your house. If you just quote Nelly at the end of this fact, I'm going to kill you. I might. (laughs) The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. The Q101 Morning Crew On Q101 Well, time for a fact that makes your brain just go And Kenzie's not going to like this Because it's about staying cool in the heat She wants to I say no tips She wants to say warm Like she was so happy at the Renaissance Fair Because it was nice It was and- so was hot and it, just, it felt so good on my skin I felt alive And now I feel <laughs> dead I feel dead inside. I felt alive. It was wonderful. You kill me every morning. That's true. Well, listen, a lot of people, most people try to stay cool in the summer. And you get the air conditioning bills, the electricity goes through there, and you're like, ah, this sucks. And I don't know if you have ceiling fans in your house. Do you have ceiling fans? Yeah, and that's about all we do. We avoid air conditioning. We keep the windows open, and then we have the ceiling fans running. And I, it, the house does stay cool because there's no sun, really. And we we close the blinds and all the sunny areas. Yeah. Are those all the tips that you're going to give? Well, no, those are actually good tips, uh, but you're doing something wrong. You leave, you leave the ceiling fans on. Like, are they on right now? My husband, you don't even understand. He is psychotic about fans on in every single room. In fact, sometimes I'm cold and I'll walk into a room that just I'm in and turn the fan off and he'll walk in and turn it on. <laughs> and be like, stopping the air circulation. I'm like, what the hell? I'm in here. You can go home today. Yeah. And you're going to win this argument now. Thank God. Because leaving the ceiling fans on when you're not in the room is dumb because it just uses electricity and it does not keep the room and airflow cooler. You can turn it on right when you go in if you're hot and that will be just as good as leaving it on for 45 minutes and you walk in. That's a fact. It will make your brain go. You're wasting electricity. It's not like air conditioning where you got to get the house back up. You know that when you're trying to keep it cool, the fan will just start blowing the air. It doesn't make it cooler, but the air hitting you makes you feel cool. That's the impression. It does not make the house cooler leaving it on all the time. It does not work. Si- I mean, I don't... You need more science? Yeah, because, like, what about, like, air circulation crap? I mean, <laughs> this is fact. This is this is science. That the air, it will not stay cooler. There's been studies where done on it. Where did you read it? And in my, my little facts. What's, no, where's the website? What website is it? I just wanted to, as you, you're throwing around the word science a lot. Um, it's actually from a website called Verify. And they do all kinds of different facts like this, and this is one of them. So you can throw that in your husband's face and let him smoke it. Thank God, because I'm so tired of him doing that. I will casually, like, I'm the only one in the room. And I walk in and turn the fan on. I'm like, but I'm cold. <laughs> now, are they happy about that? Because a lot of couples, me and Megan are on the same page. We both like it cold in the house. But are you guys, like, all on the different pages, the kid, your husband? The only saving grace I have is that, like, my husband wants to save money on air conditioning and because I get really cold it's just like his daily mission to run around and make sure his son doesn't get in the house so the house is cool <laughs> he does, he's like if you close this blind at one o'clock yeah. no sun comes in the sunroom stays cool I'm like he, okay he's got like diagrams I don't really care <laughs> yes he makes the, he manages to make the house freezing cold without 
any air conditioning. It's very special. And then our son, all he does is complain about being warm. But I'm like, because you're playing soccer in the house. So, yeah, you're toasty. But he, he also might like a little air conditioning if he got a, he got a machine there that puts air. You know, a little cold air can come on anytime he wants. He's just... He's, he's always taking his clothes off. My son's always running around like taking his shirts off. He's like, take my pants off. I go, no, leave your pants on. You can take your shirt off. I walk in and take my pants off instantly when I go home. That's, I'm upset for your family. <laughs> well, Harper's too young to understand. I, I, she can see. Daddy's in his underwear. Things can be terrifying. She walks around age. in a diaper. I just walk around. She's Wildly different. Is it? Is it? Yes. She's eight months. In fact... I don't poop in my boxer briefs, but she does in her diaper. How about that? I'm better than her. You think you're better than Harper? <laughs> I'm not. All right, there's a fact. It makes your brain go boom that you don't need to have the fans going the whole time. It's not going to keep the house cooler. That's a myth. Don't do it. You're wasting electricity. Boom. Boom. There you go. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. Q101, Brian and Kenzie. And, wow, something terrifying happened over the weekend. The taste of Antioch. I'll let WGN's reporter uh, cover the story. It's all happened around 2.40 this afternoon at the Taste of Antioch. All of the rides have now been shut down, but it was this one right behind me, the Moby Dick ride specifically, where things went terribly, terribly wrong. My bar was coming up over my head, so I was trying, every time I went up, because it was going up and I was almost about to fall out, I would slam down to close it. So that way I would not fall out. Oof. Now that is Elliot Johnson, who was on the ride, which in operation moves up and down in a circular motion. Now today, Elliot says another child, who we now know is a 10-year-old boy, slipped through the bar. He says the little boy just seemed to fly right off the ride. We're told the oh. child was thrown about 10 or 12 feet and was airlifted to Lutheran General Hospital shortly after. Now Elliot told us there something was very clearly wrong as he was on the opposite side of of the Moby Dick ride and his harness was lifting up. But it's not clear if this was down to human error or an equipment malfunction. Now, after this happened, officials here in the town from the police department, the fire department and the mayor himself all decided collectively it was for the best if all of the rides were shut down for the remainder of the day. And we're told it's actually the Department of Labour who will take the lead on this. But this, we're told, is an unfortunate first for the festival. That's a WGN report there about the poor kid that got thrown from a ride at the Taste of Antioch. And I don't know if you were there when it happened, uh, and hopefully the kid's going to be okay. I know he's in the hospital. There's also, uh, we just had a listener text in, Carl, the paramedic. There's also a GoFundMe, so if you want to look up um, the child from Antioch, there is a GoFundMe if anyone wants to help. Yeah, yeah, it's wild because you go to those things, obviously having a good time, and those rides are up there. And to me... I'm not judging who puts them up and who runs them and everything. They just always look temporary. Does that make sense? Like they look well, they like are. Uh, they <laughs> are. It's and very. When I say temporary, I mean take. I mean temporary. I mean like they shouldn't just be put up and then taken down all the time. They just feel like they're not safe. It's just crazy. Becoming an adult is realizing how terrifying carnival rides are. Yeah. Because when you're in like junior high and you go with your friends and you want to go on like the remember the zipper. When it goes up and down and your thing flips oh, while yeah. you do it, okay? Yeah. And that's all you want to do. You're like, I want to go to the zipper eight times. And now you see the zipper shake and you're like, okay, this is the worst idea anybody could have. I would not, <laughs> I wouldn't go on a carnival ride. I wouldn't let my son go on a carnival ride except for like like a carousel or I just wouldn't do the big flippy ones that spin everywhere. There's a lot of still fun things, games and stuff, but I wouldn't allow any of the... You're airborne. No, thank you. It is interesting how you said that because there's a certain age, as an over-under age, when you all of a sudden realize you can die. Yeah. And when you're young, you will get on anything. You will do whatever. And then you want to get on there and your parents want to keep you happy. You're out there at the Taste of Antioch for three hours and you're going to get some food. But how much food can you eat? At some point, you got to do something else. Well, you have to... Okay, they, this, is, this is the game plan because they've been in this position. There's always other things. There's one, non-crazy rides... Okay. okay. Like a merry-go-round. Right. You can merry-go-round. I would say maybe Ferris wheel doesn't move fast. I could I could <laughs> deal with Ferris. There's not flipping. There's all those things. Okay. There's usually some type of mirror maze. That's fight or fun house situation. Okay. Crush it or get them to the games. Oh, throw this cap. Try to win something. <laughs> Shoot the fake gun, not a real one. Water yeah. gun. Air. So I, I veer towards those things. Still in the fun area. 
Yeah. You still want to do them. I haven't been to that point yet because Harper's just still a baby, and you've had to, you have a kid that's gone through this phase. Oh, yes. So how do you talk them into that when they want to go on the dangerous one? They want, no, I that's, that's for little kids. I want to go on the real ride. How do you sell that? I tell them that I'll take them to Six Flags next week. <laughs> <laughs> and then let's focus on the carnival games, and then we can go to real rides later. <laughs> yeah, I, I lived for roller coasters when I was young, and now I won't get on one ever. I, I just don't feel it. Even the ones that are permanent, like at Six Flags and all that, I just, I just. And if they really start kicking and screaming, you're like, Santa's watching. Do you want a bad Christmas? Or he's paying oh, attention. Oh, that's right. Pull out the Santa card. Oh yeah. At 18. <laughs> Santa, Santa's <laughs> up in here. You better watch yourself. Oh man. I mean, I don't know uh, how many people still go. Like, what was that age when you realized, oh, this is not cool, um, because. I, I just even the fact that one two weeks ago where the people got stuck upside down on the roller coaster for three and that hours was like a legit that was a legit yeah. amusement park it wasn't a set up in an hour amusement park yeah. <laughs> set up in an hour I know that, that's what I that's I just I don't know I feel for the parents on there because they're just trying to have a good time and make their kid happy when they go out to taste of Antioch and then this happens it's just terrible I, I, there's just been a lot of carnival malfunctions and I get it these things fold up into each other like mini transformers they go from rides to trucks and yeah over and over and over again, they sit out in horrible weather. How are they stored? I just, and you see them because they're not completely cemented in the ground. All of them shake. All of them shake. Yeah. I don't like that. What was the best ride you ever went on? Is there one that you stand that you remember? Like, for example, mm. I remember one at Cedar Point in Ohio. It was called the Demon Drop. And I know people nearby, maybe you have heard of Cedar Point. It's about I five. I love Cedar Point. My about, favorite's at Cedar Point. It's about five hours away. Uh, but I grew I was born near there, and we go there. It was called the Demon Drop. So it just basically went up, up, up. You're sitting next to somebody, and then it just pauses. And you don't know what's going to happen. Then it just drops. And it goes, like, all the way. Just And we used to take pennies and put them on your thigh. And as you drop, the penny would go in the air, and you could look at it shaking in the air. And then when it turned at the end, it would hit you in the chest. The penny would. That doesn't sound fun at all. It wasn't. Well, it was terrifying. You're dropping. Like, you don't know when it's going to end at the bottom. When are you going to close to the bottom? I don't know. It just doesn't sound that fun. Um, <laughs> it was very fun. How dare I, you judge fun? Well, why would you want to hit yourself with metal coins while you're on the roller coaster? It sounds like what you normally avoid. Uh, uh, well, listen, I didn't say I was bright, but it was fun. It was just a penny. It's not going to kill you. So you say that, and then it goes in the wrong <laughs> spot, or your mouth. Right in your throat, you choke <laughs> You're an idiot. Well, no one ever did, as far as I know. There's probably some story if we Google it. Somebody died on the demon drop putting a penny on their thigh. Yeah, not a great idea. Uh, now they make you take all the change stuff out of your pockets. They do? When you go on certain roll, yeah. I'm going to a parks where they're like, do you have any change? Do you have that? They ask you all, that, all those questions. They're just trying to take that change as tips, right? That's not where you get tips. Yeah, the four cents someone has. <laughs> they're trying to really, really pop on. Um, I think one of my favorite rides, because it was a surprising ride, it was an indoor roller coaster. It's a Universal, and it's the Mummy ride. Oh, yeah. Okay? You're, you're a big Mummy fan. I we know that. I love the Mummy. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. People, However... People don't know that about Kenzie, but behind the scenes, she talks about this movie once a week. The easily. Mummy... Well, first off, I am an ancient Egyptian psycho. I watch all the, like, <laughs> Cleopatra docuseries, and, I like, the nerdy... Let's take a deep dive on hieroglyphics. That's what I sit around and watch. I love Egypt, and I love the mummy, and I just want to be in the movie. Okay, so anyways, <laughs> the roller coaster, though, is actually very, very good because it's indoor, and it's pitch black like the tomb. So at one point, you're going forward, and something pops out, and you completely fall down a hill backwards, but you don't see it. Oh. So you never know. You're just turning, 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 fall, fall, like other directions. It goes in every single direction. So you go sideways, front and back. Ugh. Very, very cool roller coaster in the dark. Like, I, I love that there's effects in there. It's really cool. Where was that at? Was it, oh, it was Universal Studios. Universal. Is That's it still there? my favorite. Yeah. It's they, my favorite ride at Universal. Because I they, used to live in Florida. I used to go to Universal a lot. I'm actually on the Universal Talk of Fame, in case you're wondering, because they oh, open roller coasters there. What does that mean? Because I just live broadcast when they open, like, parks and roller coasters. Yeah. So, yeah, that's it. Well, that's special. But it's very, fun. That was very special. That was very fun. But uh, <laughs> that was always my favorite ride, and I've done every ride there. I thought yeah. it was so cool. I don't know. Like I said, those rides you have a memory of that you stay with you that were just insane. Uh, you can chime in at 312-591-8300 on that. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Remember, coming up in a half hour, 720, Clash with Kenzie. VIP tickets for Lollapalooza. The night Billy Eilish will be there in Portugal. The man is that same day, the Thursday of Lollapalooza. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. 
The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. A lot of people remember the demon drop. I guess it's gone now at Cedar Point, that demon drop. It's very sad. Well, my favorite at Cedar Point was the dragster. Do you remember the dragster? I do. Where it I do. shoots you. To the, it was the tallest ride at Cedar Point. Yeah. And I, you got to the top in, what, like three seconds? And yeah. And you felt it's all the ride was. It was the one hill. But I think that closed, too. Yeah. Because some people got stuck at the top. <laughs> Jeez, some, it's some not always looking happens. good. Yeah. I mean, they end up opening so many new ones, too. They try to be the biggest in the world. The first thing there years ago, I remember when I was a kid, was the Beast. And that may still exist there. It's an old wooden roller coaster, but they had those the... Those are rough. Some of those wooden roller coasters hurt. Oh, they had the Raptor, which was the Jurassic Park one, which was pretty awesome. Because when it would go around, it make the Raptor sound on the turns, on the wheels. They had some kind of thing where... I kind of remember that now That's that you're good saying. Uh, I haven't gone to Cedar Point. Probably since I was like 18. Yeah. I think it would be the last time when my brother got married in Ohio. Yeah, if you don't know about it, it's, it's probably about a five, five and a half hour drive from here. And uh, that's for if you want the best roller coaster experience. Like Disney and Universal, they're pretty and they have good shows and they yeah. have all that. Cedar Point is when your kids get older and they can make it on every ride. And you want to ride some damn roller coaster? And you got a lot of balling. You got a lot of choices. You got a lot there. Oh yeah, but get ready. Like these are not themed lines. They're not cute. It's like a generic line, and it takes two and a half hours. But it's a badass roller coaster at it, the end of it. Amazing. Yes. A, lo- a lot of people talking about the shockwave at Six Flags Great America that. Uh, rattled a lot, and people like uh, hit their heads on the seats there a little bit. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, but the I mean, Joker kind of does that to me. At uh, have you gone to at Six Flags Great America? Yeah, the Joker, it's in this like long twisty line, and your cart flips, and but it's the tracks also flipping. God, it's almost like in a like a bigger, bigger version of the zipper a little bit. Actually, yeah. now that I'm thinking about it. And I've gotten off that thing and been like, my neck hurts really bad. Yeah. Like, that one kind of kicks my ass sometimes. Well, going to the run fair on Saturday, you go, you go by, we were going by Six Flags right there, and I was like, uh, maybe we uh, stop in there. I'll see if I can still have that fervor to go on a roller coaster. And that do would it. actually be, what you should do is you should do a day at Six Flags, stay the night in a hotel over there, and then go to the Renaissance Fair the next day. That will be a fun-ass weekend. And then you might want to go to the outlet malls up in Gurney. And then some outlet. It is a destination, baby. <laughs> it's a whole weekend right there. Uh, Gil Curtis was up there this weekend at Renaissance Fair. Uh, I won't tell you what he was wearing, but uh, Gil, give us your headlines from the weekend. This is not headline news. Eminem joined Ed Sheeran on stage at a Detroit concert. They were both pale in comparison. Oh, a woman in France was hit by a meteorite while having coffee with friends. Experts say it's proof that even space dislikes the French. Today is National Tattoo Day. Ooh, I'm going to get a super cute dolphin on my ankle, replied a representative for the International Association of Basic White Chicks. (laughs) And on this day in 1954, construction began on Disneyland in California. And this is interesting. Construction also began on the world's first $50 souvenir t-shirt. This is not headline news. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101.